Macros are shortcuts for actions they want to regularly use. In this video, we'll show you the basics of macros, how to make your first one, and some advanced tips and tricks for creating these cool shortcuts. We're going to be building our macro in a Dungeons & Dragons game using the Roll20 5e D&D character sheet. First, go to the top right hand corner of the screen and click the collection tab. The icon that looks like a few dots and dashes, this is where all your macros will live once created. If you want your macros to show up at the bottom of the tabletop, make sure to click the checkbox to show the macro quick bar. You'll see your player's name move up a little, making room for your new macros. Okay, the quickest and easiest macros are the ones that do a roll from a character sheet. For example, if your barbarian usually spends its turn attacking with its great axe, you can make that great axe attack a clickable macro. First, pull up your character sheet. Then, scroll down to the attack you use most often. In this case, it's our great axe. Now, simply click and drag the great axe attack to the bottom of the character sheet. As you drag, you'll see a gray bar show up at the bottom of the character sheet that says add to macro quick bar. Drop the great axe into that box. Now you'll see it pop up at the bottom of your screen. This name is a little too long for my taste, so I'm going to right click and select rename. I'll call this one great axe. And because I plan on making macros for this character and want to stay organized, I'll right click on it again and select a color I'd like to represent it. I'm going to choose red. And there you have it. You created your first macro. You can create quick macros like this from any rollable link on your character sheet, like initiative or saving throws and even ability checks. Remember, these types of macros are character sheet specific. And if you're playing multiple characters or are a GM running multiple monsters, this workflow might have you creating lots of macros. Okay, next example. What if you want to create something that is not on a character sheet, like a healing potion? First, go to your collection tab in the top right corner of the screen. Add a macro by clicking the add button in the top right next to macros. Let's title this one healing potion. Type that into the name box. Now, the action box is where you're going to type what you want the macro to do. Now, don't worry here. You don't need to know everything about coding to add macros to Roll20. We'll show you some simple commands to enter to make fast and easy macros. Also, this first macro, any Roll20 user can make, whether you have a free, plus, or pro account. Okay, back to our macro. Now, we know that a regular healing potion in D&D heals 2d4 plus 2 hit points. So whenever we click this macro, we wanted to roll those dice and add that number. To tell Roll20 that this is a dice roll, we need to put the roll in two brackets. So, in the action box, type in left bracket, left bracket, 2d4, plus 2, right bracket, right bracket. Now, below the action box, click the test macro button. If you click over to the chat, you'll see that 2d4 plus 2 was rolled. If you hover over the number, you can see the totals for each die. If you want this macro to be available for any token that you've selected, you can check the show as token action. With this checked, whenever you select a token, this macro will pop up in the top left corner of your screen. If you're a GM, you will have the option to make this macro visible to none, some, or all of your players. If this macro is something that all of your players have access to and use quite a bit, it's a good idea to make it visible to all of them. Once you're done, click the Save Changes button at the bottom of the macro page. Your new macro will show up in the Collections tab. Now, you'll also notice that our new macro has an in-bar checkbox. If you want this macro to show up at the bottom of the screen under player's names and avatar, go ahead and check this box. As a GM, setting this in your bar will only put it on your screen. If a player wants to add it to their macro bar, they'll have to go to the collections tab and check the box themselves. If you want to check out a full list of available commands, check out the link in the description below. Okay, this next example is a little more involved and requires the Roll20 API. So that means this example is for pro users. API scripts are lines of code that pro users have access to and can use to make their own custom code to enhance their game. Pro users can add API into their games themselves or include any of the pre-written API from Roll20's massive script library. Let's see what that's like. First, you need to add the API script to your game. You can do that from your game's landing page. Click the settings dropdown box, the one with the gear icon, then Click the second item in the list, API scripts. 
You can manage all the API scripts you've added to your game on this page. You'll notice a warning at the top recommending you make regular copies of your game just in case. Remember, API scripts are just game extensions made by all different types of users in our community. So depending on the API and its creator, you might not always get the desired effect you're looking for. It's always a good idea to make a copy of your game before adding any API to it. Now the API script we'll be using is called Critical by Ryan Jensich. This API script adds a random bonus if a critical hit is scored. Click on the dropdown from the library title. Now in the search bar, type in Critical and then select it. Below is a detailed explanation of what that API does and how it works. It's always a good idea to read through the APIs page to learn the ins and outs. Now, from the looks of it, critical is pretty simple. So let's click the blue add script at the bottom of the page. You should see a critical tab added next to the script library tab. Now that the API is added to your game, let's give it a try. Now that our game's open, all we need to do is type in the chat exclamation point critical and then hit enter. A descriptive text will pop up naming the hit and describing what happens. It's that easy. Okay, but we want this to be a clickable macro. We simply go back to the collections tab at the top right, click the add button, name our new macro critical hit. And in the actions box, we type in what we did in the chat, exclamation point critical. Now, because this is a macro we want all our players to use, select all players in the visible to players box. Then click save changes. Don't forget to check the box next to the macro to add it to the macro bar. Now you're all set. Let's test it out. Perfect. Macros are just another tool to help you customize your Roll20 experience. If you're a pro user, have fun exploring the API script library and integrating them into your macros.